I don't know what kind of crack has been smoked, uh, but uh, let's see what they are doing in patch 1318. All right. Uh, we don't need to read this. Briar, okay. Uh, maximum chime stacks. Chime stack duration 7 to 20 seconds. Bro, how fast can you drift with the Bard now? Stacking shrine. Caretaker shrine now accumulates charges over time up to a maximum of two charges. Ooh. Cooldown stack charge time 14 to 18. Shrine charge time to full heal 10 to 5. Shrine move speed 30% decaying to decaying with AP scaling. Oh shit. Okay. 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 I, this doesn't really help his laning too much. But this W change makes him actually viable. This, this W change is really, really good in like... Um, in W, it's like in range matchups. In range matchups, I'm thinking about this, you know? I think in, in range matchups, this is a really, really nice change. You, you, can, you can place... You can theoretically fight level 1 with 5 shrines. You walk to lane level 1, you place 3, and then you sit on 2 in your pocket. There's some potential value there, you know? That maybe you can squeeze. But I think Bard ult, conceptually, is very, very strong. Because it counters a set of champions that are being played. If Bard finds a way to lane, it is going to be find a way to be played too. I think a fundamental thing about Bard is that Gale Force being weaker is the biggest buff for Bard ever. Like, these buffs don't matter. It's more about the fact that Gale Force isn't being bought. But the issue is, Gale Force isn't being bought, but the champions that are being played are champions with mobility because mobility is a necessity right now in the AD carry role, right? You think Zeri, you think Zaya, you think Kaiser. Uh, you think of the evolution of that too. Um, when you go into 4-5, you see the Callistas, you see the Feliuses sometimes, but that's the champion that still plays. Gale Force, Ezreal, right? It's like... If Caitlyn is getting buffed too, which she did, right? Caitlyn already got buffs. You know, Kate Bard is something that is playable. You know, a lot of things need to align in order for Bard to be viable. You know, because it's not it's, it's less about him being viable. It's more about the fact that his ultimate uh, serves as a niche tool of engage and breaks apart compositions. Like, let's say the enemy is playing Aphelios Zerath and you have room to pick Bard. Bard is monstrous there, you know? Like, that's... That's the only window, right? Uh, where I can see some bad gameplay. But this is, I think these type of changes impact more uh, Bard's viability in solo queue more than anything else. And maybe with this change, I would consider playing Bard in solo lane. Gwen. Gwen already got a buff. Magic damage to monsters. Ooh. Okay. This is just a terror in solo queue. I really don't like Gwen jungle. Uh, its existence. I don't like junglers like this. I don't like junglers that are gonna farm 200 CS uh, and not do shit. Gwen Jungle, this sounds fucking broken, by the way. This sounds really, really OP. I'm not gonna lie. This this is a really big change, I think. Okay. Vanguard's Edge. Oh, uh, decent buff. Decent buff. Ult cooldown down is is like this type of sh this type of shit matters a lot, especially in matchup. For example, uh, let's pull up uh, let's pull up uh, Renekton as an example. So you have Renekton, let's check out the ult cooldown. Ult cooldown 120. You know, being more in line with things like this is uh, is very important for a lot of matchups for Irelia. The, the first ult cooldown down, it's like when Irelia is picked as a counter, also the window where you have ult down is so damn large, you know? Uh, so this is a pretty, pretty decent buff. It's it's a pretty decent buff. This is, this is big, I think, 15 seconds. But... This is not going to change where Irelia would be picked and where it wouldn't be picked. This is not like some game-changing thing. You know, it's just a nice buff. Michael Gervais, 8% to 6%. I think in the state that Javan currently is, is is in, I think Javan is still OP. I don't think this is enough to, to kill him. I don't think this should be enough to kill him. I don't think. I think Javan has been OP for super, super long. I think... I think Javan has been... Don't get me wrong. It's a big nerf. 2% damage on clear and also on... Uh, uh, like in the initial hit, right? I still think this is not enough. I think Javan should be picked, should be played. I think Javan is a very, very underrated champ. And was OP for Giga Long. I, I agree with Bupo on this. That Javan was really OP for Super Long. Our AP ratio increased. Uh, 20%. Ooh. Okay. In, in context, right, I need to understand first how 
casted an ult scales in damage depending on stacks. How does the R scale in terms of damage depending on stacks? Kazan blinks towards target location dealing magic damage and stacking up rift walk. Bonus damage per stack. 10%. AP scaling. 1% maximum mana. Okay. Well, my mind, I think if you can play lanes where you get away with playing Conqueror or Cassadin, I think this is pretty fucking big. If you can if you can play Conqueror or Cassadin and you can reach two core level 11, I think that you can win nine games in, in those contexts. But I think if you're playing lanes where you don't, you're not allowed to play Conqueror, I think that Cassadin will naturally be worse in my mind. But this is a decent buff. Decent buff. As the Dark and Healing adjusts, the Dark and Art damage decreased. I think Kane is a bit of a stupid design, uh, not gonna lie. I think in, in the pursuit of adding new flavor to the game, I think the E ability is a nightmare to balance. And that's why Kane is always in patch notes, because Kane has a high play rate, uh, but um, the E is disturbing. <laughs> it's it's a nightmare to balance a champion that has E. This Kane E. And it's a nightmare to balance a champ that is supposedly, you know, giga weak before transformation. So it's a very it's is is the by design very very feast of famine. This is a decent change, decent change. Okay. Uh I don't think this changes the state of canon. Uh I'm not gonna lie. But I think this is pretty fucking massive. The energy cost. Like, the fact that it's less punishing to just E flat out without Eing for damage, I think it's pretty fucking big. Yeah, this is this is a big change. I think this is fine. This is fine. But I don't think it's super, super big, honestly. Alright, Rel. Full tilt. Bonus move speed away from enemies. Down by 3, up to 5%. Bonus move speed towards enemies. 30 down to 4, 10% down. Okay. That's a decent chunk. Decent chunk. It's a decent chunk of all right, this is massive. This is massive. This is not the batch world, no. This is a massive change. A, a champion getting just a flat out damage increase when you naturally get crit in your kit is massive. This is a massive, massive buff. But don't get it twisted. You don't need to buy crit to fully utilize this, you know? I still think Eclipse, Rapid Fire Cannon, really fantastic items. I don't think you need to get too crazy with your build. I still think that Senna is better in the support position than AD. Enemies hit with last embrace AoE snare are now afflicted with a stack of mist from Senna's passive. That's a very nice quality of life change. I like that. This is cool. I still think Senna is stronger as support. All right. Dark passage, two per soul. All right. I think this is... It's like... There's cases where this is going to matter, but I think the soul system is actually holding Thresh back. I feel... I feel in a lot of cases, especially in pro players Thresh, I'd rather be in Fog of War than be on the wave taking souls. Battle Cruiser operational. I, I, think, I think that soul system is holding Thresh back completely. I hate the soul system. I think if they rework Thresh to not have souls, given, give him a appropriate passive, and fuck the souls, I think this champion would be amazing. But I think the soul system ruins the champ because of the play patterns in pro. In solo queue, not so much, but I spend my time in Fog of War as a support, in a lot of cases in lane 2 and also in general. Yo, Banku, thank you very much for the, for the 9 months. So I hate the soul system. Yeah, at least with Bard, right? It like, it follows along. It follows along. Or like, it would be cool if the souls are just permanently there. That would be nice too. Like if, if, if a teammate like kills something and you are in vicinity, right? Let's say you're in range 1.5k and the souls are just permanently there. I think that would be nice. That would be like a nice quality of life change. Health growth decreased, base attack damage decreased. Yeah, the 50 range that they gave for me was mental. Mental, bro. That was crazy. Just fucking it made his arm longer. The future of science. I think right now, in my mind, Instantly, bro, like Trindamir, Stridebaker, Trindamir, Kraken Slayer. I think that's, I would rock and roll with that shit right now if I wanted to climb a little bit, you know, and I was good Trindamir. Health growth, a base health down, cooldown up by two seconds. That's that's a hefty chunk right there, hefty chunk. But I still think Zaya would be played. 
Crown of the Shattered Coco. Ability power, 85. 75 damage reduces to 40% 40, 40 damage reduction for 2.5 seconds. Crown will no longer provide 10 to 40 AP while the shield holds. Okay, there's gonna be cases where this is actually better than this. So, for those who don't know, right? I know that a lot of people really hate Crown. Crown is never bossed because people believe it is the best DPS option, right? Crown is good in cases, okay, where you're playing against champions that have a very specific play pattern when it comes to laning and side laning. And also, Crown is good in cases where you don't want to commit to a defensive item on two core. Because Crown covers. Crown covers for that, right? So let's say you want to go Crown. We've seen cases where people go Crown into Zonia. Like those players, that's, that's pretty fucking sad to watch. When it's like Crown into Nash's Tooth, Deathcap Void, that's a pretty fucking solid, solid build, right? Because Crown covers, it's like, in most cases, right? Let me show you. Most AP builds, right? Most AP builds, it's Mythic, second item, Void, Decap. And, and the order of these are interchangeable, right? They, they change. But the second item is the only item in most cases on mages that is flexible, right? So what do you have here? Archangels, right? You have Zonia, you have um, you have Shadow Flame, Banshee, you have uh, Horizon Focus. The second slot is in most cases the slot that is flexible, right? Nash's Tooth. I think when you buy Crown and you don't want to commit into the defensive options and you want to curve out and you want to have a defensive item that allows you to lane into like assassins and champions that need to find lethal on you, then it's good. Because keep in mind that play pattern on side and in lane carries over in the rest of the game. It's very rare that a champion that all ins you on side is going to have a different play pattern in terms of how fights go, besides maybe Tristana, right? Tristana is an outlier like that. But definitely, it's like, these items can also creep into second. Don't get me wrong. I'm just saying this is like, this is like 99% true. There's gonna be cases where you buy Mythic into Zonia, into Banshee, and you're gonna win the game. Because there's no other way for you to survive. A good example is, for example, uh, Caps, game four against T1. He's playing against Vladimir Kiana as a Syndra. So he went Ludens. I believe Ludens or Leandris, probably Leandris. Leandris, I think Ludens, Ludens, Hourglass, Banshee. He just needs to survive. If he's alive, it's good, right? So that's a very unique scenario. That's a 1% case. That's a 1% case. But Crown is very cheap. It allows you to win side and it allows you to curve out. But when people don't use the crown effect to cover for the fact that they don't have a defensive item, it's very bad. Another thing that crown allows you to do is that it actually, in a lot of cases, allows you to commit first. So the best quality Azir players, they leverage the crown to actually like force hard and go. But that's why often in Western League of Legends and in general, just worse Azir players, they copy the builds and then they don't play the build the same. They are playing Crown and whatever, and they don't fucking do anything. They don't commit, they don't engage first. This is where the itemization is, is fair. And then you see like um, someone else playing Azir. They are the first ones to go all the time. It's a fucking engage champ when they're itemizing for it. The play pattern needs to also match what you buy, right? Crown is LB side lane item? No. LB is very it's a very different champion. This is this is more static, static mid laners. And you never buy crown against LB because you can proc it by just looking at you, you know? So LB is crown should not be in the game ever if LB is in the game. 100 percent You just buy mercs and you buy mythic, you know? In most cases. But there's cases where this is better, right? There were some all-in champions that they could exploit this pattern where oh you proc it and then you commit all in. There's gonna be cases, but I think in general, this is a nerf. Like, I think this is a massive nerf. I have to say that this is a massive nerf. I think this champion lost its purpose. This item lost its purpose now. That's my take.
Spirit of Sojin. Let's see what's what's up. 5 AD. Okay. I know people might laugh, laugh at 5 AD, but 5 AD hits it in the efficiency department. It's the same way where it's like you got 100 health bonus on Drinker, which was a massive buff. Because in terms of efficiency, it all, all, all of a sudden jumped. Spirit of Sojin efficiency goes down, right? So still Spirit of Sojin should be bought second in a lot of cases. It's like now Spirit of Sojin is the is the black cleaver of the of is the black cleaver in the cases where you don't need the pen. That's what Spirit of Sojin is. Can Spirit of Sojin be used on Aurelia? Yeah, probably. But I don't know if you have better items to buy on Aurelia, for example, like Blade and then Go Drinker and then Defensive. I feel like Spirit of Sojin is very greedy there. Very greedy. All right, attack damage, electroshock, mini damage, and then five AD. Yeah, this this item is completely homeless, completely homeless. Storm Razor five. Okay, I don't know. Still, I think it's like still with all of these patches we've seen, the only thing that I would explore are AD carries that are capable of buying. It's like right now the meta is if your champion can buy Ginzo or Navori, you're useful. If not, you struggle, right? Because in terms of raw DPS output, these these items are just too broken. And those are usually paired together with Kraken or Blade or whatever, right? So I don't think 5 AD is enough to get me excited. All right, that's it. That's it.